Today's lecture is about bone diseases. Our learning objectives are to outline the classification of bone diseases. Actually, we're going to learn how to classify any disease of any organ. We're going to make a scheme for this. Then we have to know the definition of rickets, osteomalacia, osteomyelitis, and osteoporosis. We have to know the difference between those four definitions. To identify the pathological changes and complications of rickets, osteomalacia, and osteoporosis. To outline the inflammatory condition affecting the joints. What are their etiology and what the fate? Uh, what are the common systemic symptoms accompanied by those inflammatory conditions? And finally, to describe the pathology of rheumatoid arthritis with its clinical pathological or clinical pathological correlation and how to differentiate between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. Classification of bone diseases. Generally, we divide, we divide any disease or classify any disease into three main topics. Idiopathic, which is primary disease, we don't know the cause. Number two, inflammatory etiology. And number three, neoplastic etiology. Those are the three main points of any disease in any part of the body. Even, for example, I'm talking about lung diseases. They may be idiopathic, they may be inflammatory, they may be neoplastic. Diseases of the GIT, colon or stomach, they may be idiopathic, they may be inflammatory or maybe neoplastic. We're going to add for this bone diseases, inherited or developmental diseases, for example, fibrous dysplasia, which is a disorganization or a disorganized tissue formed basically from fibrous tissue which interfere with the normal bone formation. It's just an example. Metabolic and endocrine diseases, of course, it affects the bone in multiple ways. Osteoporosis, rickets, osteomalacia are types of metabolic bone diseases. Endocrine bone diseases, like gigantism and acromegaly, which is related to the growth hormone released from the pituitary gland. The growth hormone if it increases before the puberty, before the joint ends or the bone ends are closed, the growing end of bone is still open, so it leads to gigantism, which is the baby starts to be a giant in all means, by all dimensions. He's a giant to his siblings, to those of similar age. His measurement is going to be more, more and more higher than his siblings or his friends or those of his same age and same level. What is acromegaly? It's increasing the growth hormone level above the normal, but after the puberty, so the end of the growing bones is closed. So it makes what we call acromegaly or acromegalic facies. It can even happen in those fitness trainers or fitness trainees and weightlifters who take anabolics because it can affect or mimic the effect of growth hormone or part of their supplements contain a source of growth hormone that can affect their bones but not the long ones so it's not going to be a giant form it's going to be an acromegalic form for example only the hands and the feet become so much enlarged in comparison to the body. Um, the jaw, the lower jaw exactly, is going to be enlarged, uh, which calls prognathism. All of these is sort of acromegalic phages. Those are the bones affected as long as the long bone ends are closed by the puberty. Others, idiopathic, which is Paget's disease of the bone, it's of unknown etiology, but it can affect the bone inflammatory, osteomyelitis, osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, neoplastic like either a benign tumor or a malignant one. Benign one, for example, osteochondroma, malignant one is osteosarcoma. Etiology of inflammatory conditions affecting the joints. How can this inflammatory condition affect a joint? It may be infection. Infection means it's going to be an organism, which might be bacteria, a virus, a fungus, or a parasite. Those are the four forms of infectious 
organisms. Crystal deposition, we have much, much, many crystals, but the most common or the most well known is the gout, where the uracemic crystals are deposited in the joints. It has very characteristic features, mainly affecting the big toe in a middle age male, exactly male, and this is called butagra, the inflammation of the big toe due to gout or due to uracemic deposits is called butagra. Also, the etiology may be a flaring in activity of a chronic arthritis, whatever the type of this chronic arthritis already. This patient has a well-known chronic arthritis, whatever the reason. It can have another acute attack on top of this chronic, which is called flaring. It's called a reactivity of this chronic dormant arthritis. Finally, it might be, might be physical, like a trauma, whatever the cause of this trauma. It can cause inflammation. So inflammation does not necessitate an organism. It's just one of the types of inflammation that is infection by an organism. It might be physical, it might be flaring an activity of a chronic type, or it might be due to crystal deposition. Fate of inflammatory bone diseases. How it's gonna end? The outcomes, like any other disease, the fate of any disease on earth is either to be resolution or change into chronic or finally end by the death of this person. So the fate of inflammatory bone diseases might end in resolution, total cure, it might have infection, suppuration and severe damage to the joint, more, more and more damage to the joint and more pathological reaction. Extension to the nearby causing osteomyelitis, it's gonna if affect the bone marrow cavity. So osteomyelitis, it's inflammation of the bone and the bone marrow itself. Systemic effects, the other body parts, how can it react to this problem? It might show pyrexia, which is fever, just high or increase in the body temperature. Malaise, anorexia, loss of appetite, nausea, Lymphoarticular hyperplasia, where the lymphocytes and the reticular sites or the reticular cells, the cells or the RBCs that contain granules, are called reticulocytes, are more active. Raised ESR, erythrocytes and elimination rate, which is a sign of inflammation. Raised white cell count according to the cause. For example, if it is viral, it starts with lymphopenia, then lymphocytosis. If it's bacterial, it's going to show neutrophilia, increase in the number of the neutrophils. If it is parasitic or allergic, it's going to be accompanied by eosinophilia. The eosinophil level is going to be higher than the normal ones. Osteoarthritis versus rheumatoid arthritis. Osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis involve inflammation in the joints, but the inflammation in the rheumatoid arthritis is much greater. The symptoms. They share some symptoms. We can say that rheumatoid arthritis can affect multiple joints in a subtype called polyarticular arthritis, and it tends to affect the body symmetrically, which means that they are all joints affected at the same time and symmetrically which means it's the right side right shoulder then the left shoulder it is the right knee then the left knee etc osteoarthritis usually affect a few joints and typically occur in one side of the body only which means it can affect the small phalanges the fingers the finger joints on the right side of the body then the toes also on the right side of the body so it does not cross to the other side rheumatoid arthritis can affect both sides right and left affecting the large joints while osteoarthritis affecting few joints and only in one side of the body what are the symptoms how can the patient complain he's gonna complain of joint pain stiffness in the joints inability to move his joints freely, swelling, which is more very severe in rheumatoid arthritis, 
restricted mobility in affected joints is source of a stiffness but it's more stiffness might be in the joints motion in one direction but restricted mobility in more than a direction symptoms that are worse in the morning the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis may arise and get worse quickly sometimes within a few weeks however the symptoms of osteoarthritis appear more slowly as a protective tissue in the joints gradually break down that's because osteoarthritis is an aging process it occurs with age as long as i'm increasing with age i'm gonna suffer osteoarthritis day by day it's gonna be cumulative effect it's gonna increase by time while rheumatoid arthritis is gonna be worse than in just a few hours because it's a reaction it's a disease it's an autoimmune disease it's antibodies attacking the joints so they might have a very destructive effect in a very short time rheumatoid arthritis it's an autoimmune disease as i said it occurs within a person's immune system mistakenly attacked healthy tissues in the joints so my own body produce autoantibodies antibodies by me formed by me to attack my to attack my tissues this immune response involves both genetic and environmental factors including cigarette smoking it could be evoked by cigarette smoking but this person must have a genetic problem and environmental factors that help this disease to be elicited what about osteoarthritis the protective cartilage gradually wears down and the bones begin to scrap against one another so osteoarthritis mainly affect the cartilage in between the joints so the bones are then being exposed to each other this wear and tear can result from repetitive movement such as in sports that place pressure on the joints joints in movement in osteoarthritis it's most likely to affect the knees and the small finger and thumb joints while in rheumatoid arthritis often occurs in the hands fingers elbows knees feet and hips and it usually occur in the same joints on both sides of the body osteoarthritis restricts to one side while rheumatoid arthritis affecting both sides right and left the diagnosis these conditions can be very challenging this is because the symptoms often overlap particularly in, in their early stages blood tests can help diagnosis or rolling out of rheumatoid arthritis and this condition leaves certain biomarks in the blood such as the cyclic citrullinate citrullinated peptide antibody and the rheumatoid factor sorry it's the cyclic citrullinated peptide antibody and the rheumatoid factor previously we just depend on rheumatoid factor but now this is ccp is more specific to diagnose rheumatoid arthritis they may also check for abnormal levels of the c-reactive protein antibody which is a marker that indicates inflammation the c-reactive protein is very important in autoimmune diseases diagnosis the pathology of rheumatoid arthritis versus the osteoarthritis we can see picture of three diseases or three joints one which is the normal joint showing the synovial fluid with the normal cartilage cover and the bones while in osteoarthritis the cartilage level which is the blue part is very thinning especially from the edges of the bones so they are articulating together and dropping against each other while on rheumatoid arthritis the joint itself or the cartilage is spared so what's the point it's a bone erosion above and swelling inflamed synovial membrane so the joint that's why it's very inflamed and swollen microscopic picture the characteristic palisading granuloma with a core consisting of necrotic collagen and fibrin is very specific to rheumatoid arthritis in osteoarthritis how to change the panel or the above picture is normal cartilage what can i see in osteoarthritis cartilage affection we can see flaring fissuring of the articular cartilage surface which is not present in the normal and so clustering of the superficial zone of the cartilage there are some clustering of 
the cartilage cells. This is V2 or caused by the erosion or the decaying of the joint cartilage. So this causes the symptoms by rubbing or continuous rubbing and friction between the opposing edges of the bones. Treatment. Both are chronic conditions. That's to say there are currently no cure for them. Unfortunately, but various treatments can help in person manage their symptoms, which is called palliative treatment. I'm just treating the symptom, but I'm not curing the disease. Improve their quality of life and slow down the progression of the condition. That's all I can do up to now, but no full cure. Neither of rheumatoid arthritis, which is autoimmune disease, or osteoarthritis, which is an aging disease. To summarize, rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis are chronic conditions that cause pain and stiffness in the joints. Both conditions can become worse over time without appropriate treatment. The effects of osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis on personal daily life range from mild to severe according to the age of the person, to the environmental conditions, and to presence or absence of smoking, the weight, the fitness, multiple and multiple conditions interfere. Rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis can cause similar symptoms, but they have different causes and treatments. In many cases, osteoarthritis is easier to treat than rheumatoid arthritis because it's usually affecting fewer joints and does not involve systemic symptoms. The progression of rheumatoid arthritis is more difficult to predict than that of the osteoarthritis.